Hello again, this is Keith Slough from Christian Fellowship Ministries of the Church of God. And I am doing a series of videos on the Worldwide Church of God and why it fell and what about the gospel that it preached and is it the same identical gospel that the Apostle Paul preached? I mean, we need to take a look at it. Now, on this video, I am going to give you the same message that the Apostle Paul preached from his own writings. And we're going to find out exactly what it was. Now, you may just want to listen, or you may want to look and read along with me. But first of all, just listen, then I'll give you the reference. The Apostle Paul, remember, said, if anybody, that would include a church, that would include any church, preaches a different gospel than what we have preached, we the apostles, let him be accursed. That's in Galatians 1, verses 6 through 9. And then he says, I say it again, let him be accursed. He put a double curse on anybody even a modern-day apostle or evangelist who would preach a different gospel than what he preached. Now listen to what Paul said. Remember, I told you that the word gospel appears in the book of Romans more than any other book in the Bible. The second uh, place where the word gospel appears uh, more than any other place in the Bible, the second after Romans is 1 Corinthians. So listen to what Paul said. Now listen to this. In chapter 1 of 1 Corinthians, now this is a long letter. They divided it up into 16 chapters. He said here, let me start in um, verse 14 of chapter 1. I thank God that I baptized none of you but Crispus and Gaius, lest any should say that I had baptized in my own name. And I baptized also the whole household of Stephanus. Besides, I know not whether I baptized any other. He couldn't remember baptizing anybody else. Now listen, just listen to the next verse. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach. Now Christ called Paul on the road to Damascus. Paul saw Jesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 1, he said he saw Jesus. He heard his audible voice. He said, Christ did not send me to baptize, he sent me to preach. What did Paul preach? Christ called him to preach, but what did he preach? Now, don't read the next of the verse. You know, I always tell people, don't believe what I, I, I teach you. Go to the Bible and prove it for yourself. But in this particular case, in this one instant, don't read the rest of the verse, okay? Just listen. Because in verse uh, 18, it says, For the preaching of the cross is to them who perish foolishness. Now, let me say something about the cross. People say Jesus didn't die on a cross. That's a pagan emblem. There was the Tamu symbol, the T, that, that became a pagan symbol. But um, according to the Anti-Nicing Fathers, which I own the entire uh, set of the Anti-Nicing Fathers, people who actually witnessed a crucifixion, way back then the sub-apostolic sub fathers they were called, they actually describe in their writings what a cross looked like. It did have a cross piece. Now, it, people say, well, was it a pagan emblem? Well, not necessarily. The Greeks had a, a staros, an upright stake, and then the Romans embellished it and added the cross piece. In fact, it looks like a capital T. They, Peter calls it in 1 Peter 2, 24, a tree. So they had these trees alongside the road. They'd take the patibulum, the Latin word for the cross piece, and they'd put it on top of it so it looked like a capital T. And then they'd put their arms out like this. That was how they were crucified. Uh, but the fact is it was a cross. Now people say, oh, but the word staros just means stake. Listen, use, use your head. Have you ever seen a telephone pole in your entire life? You ever notice that some poles have one wire across the top of the pole and other telephone poles have a cross piece? It's still a pole. I've seen telephone poles that were so busy, they had all these wires and all these cross pieces, maybe three or four cross pieces on a single pole, but it's still a pole. Uh, a telephone pole can have no cross pieces or many. And so the word staros in Greek means an upright stake, but it could have a cross piece and it's still staros. According to those who actually witnessed crucifixions in those early first three centuries, that's how they did. They actually put a cross piece on top of the thing. Now, so let's get away from the, the Jehovah's Witness doctrine of calling it a stake. It was a stake but it was a cross. Uh, in fact, they used the word uh, torture stake. Dear me. Well, anyway, let's just take it as it says here. For the preaching of the cross is to them who, who perish foolishness. What did he mean preaching of the cross? 
Uh, some years ago, uh, in the Good News magazine published by the Worldwide Church of God, David Antion, who was, I believe, evangelist ranked minister at that time, I think he was, wrote an article where he said something that at the time, this was back in like uh, the late 70s, early 80s maybe, it, it kind of surprised me that, that the church published it. He said the cross became a Christian symbol at that time. And he's right. The, Paul didn't preach a stake. He didn't preach a tree. The preaching of the cross means he was telling people about the crucifixion. In verse 23, now verse 17, Christ sent me not to baptize, but to, pre but to, but to preach. What did he preach? Listen, verse 23, but we preach Christ crucified. That's what he preached. Now, let me ask you a question. If the gospel message is, is simply a message about a coming world ruling government 2,000 years into the future from the time of Jesus, then why didn't Paul preach the gospel to the Corinthians? Chapter 18 of the book of Acts, Paul said that, uh, he said, when I was with you, I was with you for 18 months. All right. So what did Paul preach to them during that 18 months? Let me ask you, did the apostle Paul preach the gospel? Well, here it says he preached the cross. Verse 23, re-preached Christ crucified. Down below that in what we call chapter 2, it's all one letter, of course. Verse 1, and I, brethren, when I came to you, now he's writing this from Ephesus over in Turkey, but he's writing this letter now to the Greeks over in the nation of Greece, in southern Greece. When I came to you, I came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God, for I determined, what is the testimony of God? He said, I declared to you the testimony of God. What is the testimony of God? Think about it. What is the testimony of God? He said, that's what I preached. For I determined not to know anything save, that word means except, Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Now let me ask you a question. Why didn't Paul preach the gospel? If the gospel message is a message about a coming world-ruling government of God, Paul said, let me read it one more time, I determined when I was with you not to know anything except Jesus Christ. When he was with them for 18 months, all he preached was Jesus Christ. He did not. He preached the messenger. Remember I told you about a letter I got from a man one time who said he was really angry at the Apostle Paul because he said Paul only preached the messenger? And he didn't preach the gospel? Let me go back to verse 17 now. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach. To preach what? But to preach the gospel. Then why didn't Paul preach it? Do you realize that if preaching Christ and Him crucified is not the gospel, then the Apostle Paul never one time preached the gospel in the entire year and a half he was there in Corinth. And yet he said, Christ called me to preach the gospel. If that's not the gospel, then he didn't preach it. He didn't fulfill what Christ called him to do. Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever thought about, have you ever given any, that any thought whatsoever? You should think about that. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 8 Paul, in his very last letter to Timothy, he said, remember, he didn't want God's ministers forgetting what the true gospel is. Paul said, remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. So the crucifixion and the burial and the resurrection of Christ is, according to the Apostle Paul, the gospel he preached. Did you hear that as the gospel and the worldwide church of God? Oh, they, they believed in this message. But was that the gospel? Or did they preach a different message as the gospel? Now, Paul said if you preach a different message other than what he preached, you're going to be accursed. Do you understand now why the church died? I'm just getting started. I'm already out of time on these short 10-minute videos. But on the next video, I'm going to continue this. And I'm going to really nail it down where you're going to see exactly what the Apostle Paul preached. And I want you to tell your friends, if you have other people that you know that used to be in the Worldwide Church of God, would you get on the telephone and call them up? Contact them on Facebook or whatever and let them know about these videos and tell them about it. Now, 
if you've already heard that I'm preaching a lot of heresy, why don't you prove all things and go to these scriptures and look them up and prayerfully study them and see what the real truth is. Until the next 10-minute video, this has been Keith Slough.